Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at a little homebrew Yagi that I've put together. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So recently, I've been wanting to experiment with a homebrew Yagi antenna. Now, if you follow the channel or have been for a little while, you've probably seen that I purchased the Elk antenna, oh, just a few months ago. And that is a absolutely fabulous antenna. I can't recommend that more, uh, any more to you guys. But the one downside to it is it's a little bit heavy. Uh, now, uh, on another good side, it's able to cover 2 meter and 440. However, I don't find that I use 440 a whole lot when I'm working simplex with a directional antenna. And kind of the purpose behind this project was to develop a directional antenna, so a Yagi, and to keep it as lightweight as possible. Now, one of the ways that I was uh, able to cut some weight down on this is I only focused on two meters. I didn't worry about 440, since that's not something that I use very much, and I could always grab that elk antenna if I thought I was going to need both two meter and 440. But what I came up with uh, weighs in at about six ounces. So it's super lightweight. It packs up to roughly uh, two feet, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. But uh, it breaks down super small. You can basically just bundle all of this together and that's what you've got when you're done. So let me bring you guys in a little bit closer and we'll take a look at what I ended up doing to put all of this together. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the elements here, and there's really nothing special about these elements. I just picked up some aluminum arrow shafts uh, that were uncut off of the internet, and then I went ahead and put some of these inserts into it, which gives me a thread on the end of uh, the the end of the arrow and then on the other end on Amazon I was able just to find some uh, little black rubber caps that kind of finished it off fairly well so nothing particularly special about these the one thing uh, that I haven't found a real good solution for and it may just be my lack of knowledge when it comes to archery I haven't found a good way to put these inserts in uh, and, and keep them you know pretty tight uh, so if you have an idea about that leave it down in the comments below uh, I do have the arrow I think sized correctly at this point that took a couple of tries on my part again uh, just ignorance when it comes to archery but uh, I believe I do have the arrow sized correctly and this is in there I did try a little glue that was kind of uh, hit or miss as sometimes the glue would seep out and uh, end up between the insert and the arrow shaft and actually cause it so I didn't have continuity through the arrow. So uh, a bit of trial and error there. I do have a little bit of glue in there, but it just doesn't seem to hold it as tight as I want. Uh, what I would like to figure out is a way to actually kind of crimp these uh, so that it was a, a better fit between the insert and the arrow. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the main boom section. Pardon me while I get some of those elements out of the way and here you can see the main boom section now this is the velcro that i also use uh, to hold the elements in place when i'm packing it around and then i just put a very short section of coax on here i cut it and uh, put some wire terminals on here and a little bit of heat shrink and it works well enough for now this was really just uh, for quick testing and so i could uh, trim the elements as needed to get the swr correct i think i'll end up putting a bit of a longer um, piece of coax on there not sure if i'll stay with this size coax i can't even remember this was kind of just a jumper that i had that i cut in half uh, that was laying around in the shack this looks like it might be uh, RG8X maybe. Uh, I don't know if I'll stay with something this size or maybe a little bit smaller depending on how long of a run I end up putting on it. Each of these pieces, uh, this one here is on the reflector end and this rod 
threads all the way through this piece that I ended up drawing and printing in uh, or printing with my 3d printer uh, so this one does pass all the way through so we have continuity across both sides and then in each of these that you see i have uh, put one of the little metal inserts uh, you insert these with a soldering iron uh, and a special tip and that allowed me to get a set screw in there to keep this thing so it's tight against the main boom shaft now, the one in the center for the driven element is a bit different uh, because you don't want continuity between both sides. So this actually has some plastic that is printed in the middle of this particular piece that I 3D printed. And the element or the uh, screws here for the elements only go in part of the way, maybe a third of the way, maybe not quite to the middle because there is that plastic. Same thing for the other side. Now, something else I'm experimenting with is the different types of holders and adapters. This one that I 3D printed is specifically designed to go on the top of my TN07 uh, mask, the smaller green one that I take out portable quite often. And uh, the cool thing about this entire setup is because it's so lightweight, that pole will actually hold this thing up at about, uh, I'm going to guess, 25 feet, maybe 28 feet. I can't go quite all the way to the top of it, but uh, I do get it up uh, quite a ways. And then again, on the very end, we just have this, uh, this other element here that matches the uh, reflector. This is for the director. Again, it's, uh, the continuity is all the way across, and this is just one piece of rod threaded all the way through it but just something that i was kind of playing around with maybe uh maybe i can do some testing with it on fill day it's fairly close it's not perfect but i think it'll be close enough for a quick fill test to take out and try now on these adapters i have printed a couple of different ones i also have one that will mount to uh, the top of my larger uh, diameter mass the one that I think it's only like 25 feet tall if you've seen my videos with the elk antenna uh, it's the mass that I use with it but I have printed some different ones of these that I can use for different style masts so if you have any ideas on how I might improve this leave it down in the comments below uh, I am limited by my drawing ability in 3D. That's something that I'm just kind of diving off into. Thankfully, most of these shapes were uh, pretty basic and easy to tackle. But uh, I am always open to ideas on uh, how I might could improve up on this design. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up before you head off, and we will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.